Hey, this is Daniel with The Nostril and today I want to talk about the best jasmine solo floor I have ever smelled. It's from Rogue Perfumery and it's called Jasmine Antique. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the wonderful house that is Rogue Perfumery and the perfumer behind it. I'm going to talk, of course, about this amazing jasmine scent. I'm going to talk about where you can get it. I'm going to talk about its longevity, its performance, its sillage. I'm going to talk about how much I love it. So if you're interested in learning more, stay tuned. We're going to talk about it today. Rogue Perfumery takes its name seriously. Rogue. If you are at all engaged in the world of perfumery, you'll, you'll know of uh, an organization called IFRA, which uh, for reasons generally of uh, animal ethics and for reasons of uh, human allergens, limit or uh, pre prevent the inclusion of certain ingredients in perfumes. Uh, Manuel Cross, a former chef who decided to move from creating explorations of taste to explorations of smell, created Rogue Perfumery. And this is maybe four or five years ago now. And IFRA is a European organization. And so Manuel Cross only sells in areas where IFRA is uh, mandated to be followed. So if he sells in the United States, he can use whatever ingredients he wants. And this is what he's done. Uh, I believe the tagline of the House Rogue Perfumery is bureaucracy destroys art. And if there is one word I would use to describe the scent creations of Rogue Perfumery, it is art. So in particular, Manuel Cross has used oak moss, and jasmine in ways that are absolutely wonderful, harken back to vintage perfumes of old eras, and are used in concentrations that would not be allowed for sale in IFRA compliant countries. So Jasmine Antique, one of the latest releases from the house uses, if you can guess, jasmine. Uh, and it uses a hell of a lot of jasmine. Jasmine, uh, for, for reasons I believe of, of um, mild human allergens, is, is restricted in usage by IFRA, but here it is used to its absolute full glory. Let me just give you a little close-up of the, the presentation here, because this is, now, now Rogue Perfumery is very much an independent house. Uh, the presentation here looks it, too, uh, in, in a totally lovely way. You can even see where the little band has been glued by hand right there around the top of the cap. And the, the bottle itself is just a, a simple bottle. I think I can buy these as decant bottles online really easily. The spray is one of those pretty classic sprayers from the 1980s or so. It doesn't really kind of have the feeling of a perfume that was made today. And that's true both in presentation and in the way that this smells. This smells, well, like jasmine. It, 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 it is the most true to life, accurate perfume depiction of jasmine that I have ever come across. It is perfectly balanced between the, 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 the beautiful top notes of jasmine, um, that kind of deep, slightly bitter floral, very humid floral quality, and some of the more indolic qualities that can come out in jasmine as the flowers are beginning to decay. Now, in case you're not aware, indolic qualities in white florals are a really important ingredient in perfumes. Indolic just basically means the smell of decay, really, I mean, in a slightly morbid way, the smell of death. People think of white florals as the, these kind of pretty, almost virginal flowers that uh, you know are, are meant for young women to wear and smell pretty and beautiful. And, and there is an element of, uh, of white florals that, that speaks to that, for sure. There is a really kind of sense of purity, let's say, <laughs> when it comes to certain white florals. And, and perfumers 
when they're making a perfume can choose to highlight those aspects or highlight other aspects. But if you've ever actually smelled real white florals, and in particular jasmine, uh, or you know tuberose, or or gardenia, or or lily of the valley, those flowers have an amazing depth of smell. And it's not just about those really kind of pretty top notes. There, uh, there is a quality to white florals that smells like decay because these flowers, as soon as they start blooming, they're beginning to die. Right? The, they're they're often very short-lived flowers, and so you get this wonderful mix of just the fresh bloom of the flower in addition to the the other flowers surrounding it that are beginning to to pass away that are beginning to to wilt and beginning that process of decay and it's a beautiful smell it it, it smells humid and it smells ever so slightly you know animalic is the wrong word because it's florals but it smells kind of slightly off slightly musky slightly What's the word I'm looking for? Like death, in a beautiful, in a beautiful way. Uh, and and what Manuel Cross has done with Jasmine Antique from Rogue Perfumery here is to capture every aspect of jasmine in in its process of blooming and then dying. Uh, it is a solo floor. It is all it's doing is trying to do the best job it possibly can at capturing jasmine, and it it completely succeeds. I, I'm so happy to have found this. I'm so pleased that Manuel Cross took the time and applied his art to create such an amazing showcase for jasmine flowers. Let me, uh, let me spray and I'll tell you a little bit about what it smells like. Although honestly, this isn't gonna take very long because it smells like jasmine. So the sprayer is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty, inexpensive looking sprayer and it doesn't have an amazing diffusion it, it it's it's not bad but it, it definitely doesn't feel like a modern atomizer i'll say that much oh wow just wow i'm just i'm blown away by this so immediate right off the bat you get that kind of sweet bloom of jasmine it it's it's floral with a, with a hint of that indolent, indolent quality right, out, right off the top. But really the star of the show here is the beauty of fresh jasmine right, out, right at the top. Now, to, to accentuate and bring out some of the more uh, deep qualities of jasmine, Cross has added clove and vanilla. And, and you might think, oh, well, this is a solo floor. Why is he adding other stuff? Well, that's because to capture the way that these flowers smell in real life, you can't just use the ingredient itself. You can't just put a bunch of jasmine in a bottle and say, hey, it smells like jasmine. Uh, that makes sound strange, but it's true. Because the process of, of turning jasmine blooms, jasmine flowers, into essences and oils and extracts that are used in perfumery changes the smell of that original, of that original petal. It doesn't smell the same on the plant versus the ingredient that gets, that gets put in the perfume. Uh, and so what he's had to do is use other ingredients to try and recapture the experience of smelling real jasmine. And, and the vanilla and the clove work perfectly to do that. They're, they're, they're subtle. You can't really pick them out beyond the jasmine. All they are doing is informing the jasmine here, and it's absolutely lovely. Now, as the perfume dry, dries down, and this is the brilliant part, it actually starts to increase that indolic sense. So he's actually capturing the life of jasmine, in addition to just capturing the experience of it. It's, it's brilliant and, and truly olfactory art right here. I, I am just stunned by by this scent and and if you're at all interested if you like white florals if you love jasmine you need to have this in your collection it's a blind buy a hundred percent a blind buy uh, if you are interested in perfumery as art as capturing photorealistically the experience of being in a in a glade or a grove of jasmine you need to have this in your collection it is one of my favorite florals in my collection because it does such a good job of recapturing the experience of real flowers. Now, 
I love florals of all kinds in perfume, but oftentimes they don't really smell like the actual experience of engaging with those flowers. Let's be honest. Uh, some of them do a good job of that, but oftentimes, honestly, some perfumes are not interested in doing that. They're interested in using flowers to explore other sensations and other experiences. And that's, of course, one of the most important parts of perfume is to use ingredients to tell a different story. As Jean-Claude Elena would put it, perfume is a lie that tells the truth. It's using other ingredients to create the sensation of something. And so perfume is important. It, uh, it is important to perfume rather to, to use white florals, for example, to other ends, to other projects. But here, and in the case of most solo floors, which are perfumes that focus on a single, this, it's the experience of a single floral or a single flower, what he's doing is trying to capture a photorealistic experience of jasmine. He did it. <laughs> he did it. And this is making waves in the fragrance community as the new reference jasmine for perfume. It just, it, it works. It, it does its job so well. It, and it's such a simple task that is, well, well, deceptively simple. Because you'd think, oh, well, just all, all we're doing is recreating this one smell. We're not creating something new. There's no, there is no kind of mixing a bunch of notes together to create a new smell that you've never experienced before. This is art of a different kind. This is art that is engaged with the, the plant world in a way that a lot of perfumes aren't interested in. It's, it's absolutely lovely. Uh, and, and really moves beyond that stereotype surrounding white florals of being, you know, pretty. This is a, don't get me wrong, this is a pretty scent, but it's so multifaceted in its, in its exploration of this single flower and, and has qualities that you never associate with white florals as they are used in designer perfumery. It just, it's capturing the entire life of the flower in a way that is rough around the edges as jasmine in real life is. It's, it's not plucked and tuned to smell its prettiest at all times. It's, it's doing its own thing because of course, Jasmine isn't producing the smell of itself to please us. That's not, I mean, if, if we are to assign a, uh, a kind of purpose to the role of evolution, which is, you know, not a good idea and wrong, but if we can imagine that there is one, Jasmine doesn't give a crap about us. It's, it's, it's producing the smell for means and ends beyond human olfactory enjoyment. So it doesn't care whether it smells pretty to humans in particular. Uh, and Manuel Cross has done a fantastic job of, in a sense, becoming the flower. This perfume is engaged so well in, the, in capturing what jasmine is through its affect of smell that in a sense, this, this perfume is, is in the process of becoming jasmine. It, it's it, it, in a philosophical way, somewhere in between perfume and jasmine, it's, it's, it's crossed a barrier somehow in a way that I'm, I'm just totally impressed by. So as I said, there's not much more to say about the smell. It smells like jasmine. It smells absolutely perfectly beautifully like jasmine. And if you are at all a fan of white florals or jasmine, you owe it to yourself to smell this. Jasmine Antique by Rogue Perfumery, a crowning triumph of solo floors. Check it out. Thanks for watching. <laughs>